From Hollywood, it's time now for Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. Mr. Dollar, this is Miss Beale at the travel office calling back. I got your plane space, all right. Oh, good. Wait till I get a pencil. Okay. You leave Idlewild tomorrow morning at 9 on National Flight 405, and you reach New Orleans tomorrow evening at 5.01. 5.01. Got it. You'll have to stay in New Orleans overnight, and the earliest flight I could get out of there is Pan America number 701 the next morning at 8. 8 o'clock. That'll put you in Managua at 5.50 that evening. And there's a train from there to San Juan del Sur. Oh, that part of it should be fun. The fare one way, including tax, is $216.55. Why don't you buy a round trip? Well, just habit, I guess, superstition. I don't like to presume I'm going to get back from any of these trips I make. That would really be asking for trouble. Edmund O'Brien in another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Britannia Life Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the David Rocky matter. Expense account item one, $4.50, transportation from Hartford to New York City. Item two, a dollar and twenty cents cab fare to the hiring hall of the National Maritime Union. Tom. I talked with you on the phone, Mr. Richter. Dollar? Oh, yeah. Well, like I told you then, your man is in San Juan del Sur. Or if he left, we don't know about it. I hope he's there. I've got plane reservations. I uh, called the Edwardson line. That's the outfit he was sailing for. I want to double check on our records, and theirs are the same. He missed his sailing in San Juan del Sur, and they signed on a local man as far as Panama. The ship was Delisle Edwardson? That's it. Can you give me anything that would help identify him? Well, uh, here's his signature and his last job assignment card. Uh-huh. Can I keep this? Yeah. I guess so, sure. Thanks. See, uh, here's his membership book number, 146544. Uh-huh. All right. Would you happen to have any photographs in your file? No, but the Coast Guard office would, on his certificate of identification and certificate of service. They'll both be in a file on him over there. Good, that's what I need. I wouldn't know him if I did find him. I'll fix you up. Uh, naturally, I'm curious, you flying all the way down to that port. What do you want with this David Rocky? Mind telling me? He just became a millionaire. What? Well, when Rocky was a kid, he was adopted by a Titus Morgan in Boston. Wealthy man. He just died, leaving everything to Rocky. <laughs> Any like that? A million and a half, including 50000 in insurance. That put me on the case. Hmm. Well, would you like to get some news like that? I don't think I could take it. Well, thanks a lot, Mr. Richter. Well, that was nothing. Yeah, when you find this guy, ask him if he can spare a few bucks for the seaman's home, will you? <laughs> From the Coast Guard documents on David Rocky, I memorized this picture, and the next morning, I left New York. <laughs> Expense account item three, $297, fare and incidentals to Managua. Item four, $35, a charter plane I finally arranged for the next day that put me in San Juan del Sur at three o'clock the next afternoon. I found hotel accommodations and then looked up the local office of David Rocky's last employers, the Edwardson Steamship Line. Well, that's it. Oh, good afternoon. Hello. My name is Dahl. I just arrived from Hartford, Connecticut. Well, well, well. My name is Wall. Clayton Wall. How do you do? Mr. Wall? Why on earth would anyone leave Hartford to come to a place like this? I'm an insurance investigator. I was sent down here to find a seaman who sailed on one of your ships, David Rocky. Remember him? Oh, yes. Certainly I remember him. Did you say insurance investigator? That's right. Why did you ask that? Oh, I just wondered. What do you want with him? He has some money coming from a policy and an estate. Oh. 
I think I'd go back to Hartford, Mr. Dollar. Why? David Rocky is not in a position to hear about money up in the States. Oh? He's in jail. He's being charged with murder. I see. When did this happen? Well, I'm afraid I don't have all the particulars. The papers, they aren't famous here for accurate reporting. But uh, he missed his ship, you know. That was not quite two weeks ago. Yes, I've been told that. I believe the reason was a drinking bout. And as a result of it, this employee of ours, a Nicaraguan, was killed. Stabbed to death, I believe. Why didn't anybody know about this in New York, his union or your company? Things move very slowly down here. Well, you must be in contact with your New York office. My communications are of a purely business nature, Mr. Dollar. I suppose that sounds rather inhumane. Yes, as a matter of fact, it does. I... This, this office... office handles many thousands of dollars each year for the company, and I, I have to protect its position. You mean that's why you didn't report this trouble of Rockies? And if I had, it would have meant interference with the officials. And that wouldn't have been good for you? It would not. One who wants to continue in business here doesn't interfere with the Guardia Nacional. It is both military and police. And like in all countries, they have legal procedures. I take it you haven't seen Rocky since he was arrested? No, I haven't. Well, I hope you don't mind if I do. I'll be blunt with you. As long as the interference doesn't stem from this office, I think it's highly in order. I wish you luck, Mr. Dollar. And I'd like to have you tell me how you come out. I'm not as heartless as I sound. No, sure, sure. Just a good businessman. <laughs> Before I tackled them, I learned what I could about the police setup in Nicaragua. The Guardia had been organized originally by American Army and Marine officers. A lot of what I dug up would have been good news to criminals, a couple of thousand men enforcing laws in the country about the size of New York State. But at least it looked like I'd find somebody who could speak English. I did, but that was all there was in my favor. You cannot talk to him. He's a prisoner, and I will not have people talk to him. Why not, Sergeant? Why don't you want me to see him? It's for me to say. That is my order. You're an important man, I understand that, but there are some who are more important. What do you say? You're evidently used to dealing with people who are afraid of you. I don't have any reason to be afraid of you. Importance? I do not understand. And then fear? I'm here under the proper papers. They give me certain rights. David Rocky was under papers, too. He has rights. Does he have a lawyer? He does not want one. That's difficult to believe. You think I lie? I think you'd better let me go see him. No. He's a prisoner. Prisoner or not, he has a right to see me. I'll go to the American consul in Managua if I have to. You must know where he'll go, to your superior officers. You can't do this because of personal feelings, Sergeant. You stay ten minutes. No more. Thanks. Maybe that'll be enough. <laughs> Who is it? Don't you have a light? No. Who is it? My name is Dollar, Rocky. I came down from the States to find you. That's a laugh. I know how these things go. They haven't even heard about it up there, so why should anybody come looking for me? Titus Morgan died. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. What does that have to do with it? He, uh, left you a little money. Some insurance. The company wanted to find you so they could clear their books. Is this a fact? Yeah. What about this murder charge? If you've been outside, you know more about it than I do. This is where I woke up, and this is where I've been. I don't know what's going on. What do you mean, this is where you woke up? I got drunk. I don't remember getting here. You know about the murder charge? Oh, yeah, they told me about that. What happened? I don't know. I drank too much. It almost seems like I got a mickey. Did you kill this guy? Are you on the level? Certainly I am. Here, hold my wallet while I get a match. That's my operating license. My cards are inside. Connecticut. That's close to home. I'm sorry I was so suspicious, but you could have been working for the police, coming in here to give me some false hope and make me blab. What about the killing? I don't remember. I don't know what happened. His name was Sagasa. He was foreman of the longshoreman crew that loaded us. I know that. Well, I didn't have to stand watch that night, so I went with him. I've done it before. I knew him. There were all these drinks at his place, finally, with his wife. I remember midnight, but not much after that. 
except half remembering going to bed because I was so stiff. You went to bed there? I'm not even sure of that. I think so. I don't remember going anyplace else. And believe me, I've been trying to. What then? I don't know. Almost like a nightmare. I can remember the police being there. In the morning, I was here. And that Sergeant Ortega won't tell me what's going on or let me see anybody. I don't even know how he was killed. You've been stabbed. He was lying on the floor in the middle of the front room. I wouldn't have any reason to kill Emiliano. You remember who was with you? Yeah, there was his wife, as I said. What's her name? Misha. Tell me about her. Well, there's nothing about her. She's Sagasa's wife. After I met him, I met her. I've made this port quite a few times and got to know them both. Mm-hmm. Who else was with you? Two other men. One was Dave Light. He was a crew member of the ship, so he's gone. The other is Chris Binstead. He's in charge of the warehouses here for the Edwards and Company. Then there was a there was another girl, Alicia. I don't know where she came from. I'll find out. You you really going to look into it? Yeah. I don't see an American sitting here in a black cell without somebody helping him. I won't say I've been praying, but if I had been, you'd sure be the answer to them. I'll let you know what I find out. And Mr. Morgan died. That's right. He was a great man. I wish I'd stayed home. I'll try to see you tomorrow night. Hey! Hey, let me out! I couldn't see him. The cell was that dark. But when the door clanged shut behind me, I realized the irony of the situation. The heir to a million and a half dollar fortune in a jail cell in Nicaragua without rights, privileges, or even light. We will return you to the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. Every Saturday night, Americans from coast to coast play Sing It Again. Do you? Well, if you don't, you don't know the fun and excitement you're missing. Prizes galore, plus a special jackpot prize if you can name the phantom voice. So stay at home, play at home on Saturday nights, when over many of these same CBS stations, Dan Seymour says it's Sing It Again. Now with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we return you to the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now you saw the prisoner, don't trouble me no more. He told me he wouldn't have any reason to kill the man, Sergeant. That's what he said. And that he doesn't remember killing him. That's what he said, too, and why? He says he was drunk, yes. But he remembers other things, like the police being there. Seems to me he'd remember killing somebody. Uh, why do you think he'd tell the truth if he do remember? It just seems to me that he was telling the truth. You are too innocent, senor. Maybe. But I'd like to know what you've got on him. I do not understand. Well, what are you building your case on? Just the fact that he says he doesn't remember? He says he'd have no reason to kill Emiliano. What motive are you using? Motive? The wife. You mean there was something between Rocky and the wife? To herself, she is a cat, and all men, they are mice for her. All right, that's something. There wouldn't be enough in my country. No? That's nothing but the vaguest kind of circumstantial evidence. Don't you have anything real? The, the murder weapon, for example? It was not found. What about the fatal wounds, then? What kind of a knife made them, do you think? It was a wide knife. Uh-huh. As a seaman, Rocky could have been carrying a knife, but it would have been a small one. You think of that? We searched him. He did not have a knife. He threw it away. How do you know he threw it he away? He did not have it. You believe in his lies. I tell you what the people say who were with him. I don't want to hear your version of what they said. I'll talk to them myself. No, you do not. You do not in your fear. Look, as far as you're concerned, he's guilty until he can be proved innocent. And you don't want anybody to try and do that. Now, don't try to stop me, Sergeant. If you don't want your superiors on your neck. You'll be in trouble, too. You are careful. <laughs> My first move was to get a cable off to Hartford advising the company of the situation and suggesting that the Titus Morgan estate send a lawyer to San Juan del Sur as quickly as possible. By then, it was 5 p.m. Through Clayton Wall in the Edwardson office, I found the address of the Sagasa widow, one in a section of houses that the company had improved for their employees. 
Mrs. Sagasso is an attractive, unusually fair-skinned woman of maybe 23 or 4 who was outside enjoying the moist wind of evening when I arrived. She, too, spoke English. The company told me. I work here. Oh, it seems to be a good company. There's a lot for its San Juan people. Sometimes I think it is good. But then sometimes I think it would be better never to know any Americans. But they bring me many presents from America. David Rocky and who else? The other sailor from the ship, the one named David. Light? Yes, that one, too. And one called Robert. What did your husband say about all these presents? Did he mind? Only sometimes he was angry. He would say, you are my wife, you don't take these things. And I'd say, yes, Emiliano, I'm your wife. And these things don't change that. And he would smile and he was not angry anymore. Was he angry about David Rocky? Sometimes. You know he's in jail, don't you? Yes, I know. Did you see him kill your husband? No. I understand you were here. Yes, I was here with Alicia. We came out here, it was hot inside. Oh, and the men were still inside, huh? Dave Light and Rocky and your husband? Yes. And uh, there was one other, wasn't there? What was his name, Binstead? Yes, Chris Binstead. Did you hear anything from out here? Well, no, only talking. All of them talking? I think so. David Rocky thinks he remembers lying down while he was here. I think he stood up. He was up when you came out of your house? Yes, I, I think so. It was, well, there was a lot of rum. Yes, I know. Had there been any trouble, any arguments? No, I, I don't think so. Don't you remember? There was only trouble when Chris ran out. Then Emiliano said... What did Chris say? He said, Dave, he caught Emiliano. Dave who? Only Dave. Could he have meant Dave Light? Well, I, I don't know. Was Dave Light still in the house? No, he, he was gone to bring the guardia. Look, it's very important that I learn all the truth about what happened. The Guardia have made up their minds that David Rocky killed your husband. If he did, he'll be punished. But if he didn't, that's got to be proved. I came here to tell him that, well, that he had a new life to live. New life? What does this mean, it's new life? David Rocky is a rich man in America now. Rich man? Do you know how much a million dollars is? No. Well, it's... It's more than you or your children or your grandchildren could ever spend here in San Juan. David Rocky has more than that now. He doesn't know. I came here to tell him about it. But when I found out about your husband, I didn't. Oh, no. You would surely curse God if you told him. You understand now why I have to learn the truth, don't you? Yes. All right. Then will you take me into your house and try to remember everything that happened before you and Alicia went outside. Another Edwardson ship had docked that evening, and I found Chris Binstead on the wharf supervising the placement of the cargo that was streaming into the warehouse. He didn't want to, but he turned his job over to a helper and led me up some stairs to his office in the loft of the building. I don't quite get you being down here. You say Dave Rocky came into some money, huh? Yeah, a little... From an insurance policy. Somebody in his family? He didn't have any family. That's what I thought. He never talked about having a home or anything. Yeah. Did you get in to see him? Yeah, I saw him. It's a whale of a spot he's in. Yeah. I feel sorry for him, but what else can you expect? Did you see him kill Sagasa, Chris? Yeah. And I don't want to see anything like that again. What happened exactly? Well, the whole thing was that everybody had been drinking too much. He... Passed out and laid down on a cot. If he'd stayed there, everything would have been all right. But Misha, she's nothing but a package of trouble anyway. She had to go over and try to wake him up. She said something that got her husband started. What do you mean, started? Yeah, riled up, you know, something personal. So he goes over and dumps Rocky on the floor and tells him to get out and not come back. Rocky hit him once and then went out in the kitchen, got the knife, came back. Misha told me she was outside. Yes, she was. I sent both the women out when the trouble started. She said there hadn't been any trouble. <laughs> she knows better than that. Yeah, I guess so. Well, I can't see why she'd lie. Yeah, I never figured them out, any of them. Anyway, Rocky came back with a knife, and they called each other some names, and then all of a sudden there was Emiliano on the floor. Then what? Yeah, that was the end of it. Went and told Misha what had happened. Dave Light went after the Guardia. What did you say to Misha? Oh, I just told her that Rocky had killed her husband. 
He says you told her Dave did, that you didn't say Rocky. Well, maybe I did say Dave, but I meant Dave Rocky. What are you pressing me for? I'm just trying to find out what happened. I told you what happened. How about this Dave Light? How come he was able to climb aboard his ship and leave? Yeah, he reported the thing. Mr. Wall at the main office talked to the guardian. They let him go. What is all this, Dollar? You got the facts. It's funny that David Rocky doesn't remember killing him. Is that what he says? He doesn't remember? A man who does a thing like that when he's blind drunk is usually following his subconscious mind. That would mean that when he's sober, he probably would have thought about killing Emiliano. So? That would mean that the motive might be the elimination of the husband. Now, I can't figure a seaman who's here in San Juan only a few days at a time even thinking of going to these lengths to get rid of Misha's husband. What are you driving at, Dollar? I'm thinking out loud, I guess. Why? That'd better be all. I, uh, guess you have to get back to work, huh? Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot for seeing me. It was coal black when I left and made my way on foot back to my hotel. A message was waiting for me at the desk. Please phone Mr. Clayton Wall. I've been waiting for you to call. Oh, yes, Mr. Wall, what is it? The widow, Micha, came to my house. She wanted to get in touch with you. That's funny. I gave her my hotel. You were out, and she couldn't find you. Oh, yeah, maybe that's it. What does she want? She didn't tell me, but she'll be at her house and would like to have you come there. All right, I'll go right over. Come before this. Well, I was busy asking questions. I saw Chris Binstead. What did he say? It's hard to tell the lies from the alcoholic confusion. I don't understand you. I don't understand it either, Misha. Well, why'd you want to see me? I found a knife. Oh? Where? Behind that... That, that uh, chest? Yes. Yeah. I didn't touch it. Why wasn't it found before? Guardia, they didn't look. How did you happen to find it? I don't know. After you leave, I started to think of something told me. Look there. Now tell me the truth, Misha. I tell the truth. You want to help David Rocky? If I can help. All right. Then don't say anything about finding the knife. Not to anybody. I don't tell. You didn't tell Mr. Wall? He asked me, but I don't tell. All right, leave it that way. Don't say anything to anybody. <laughs> I slept after that, almost the first sleep I'd had since I left New York. And the first thing the next morning, I arranged for another charter plane to Managua. In it, I sent the murder weapon and the only other thing I could think of that carried David Rocky's fingerprints, my wallet that he'd held while I showed him my identification. After a meal that passed for breakfast, I went back to see him. I've been going crazy in here. What have you found out? Oh, not much. Some of it good, some bad. We'll have to wait till this afternoon to do any more. Seems like this is a hangover I'm never going to get over. The times I haven't been going crazy, I've been thinking of Mr. Morgan. How did he die? Heart. He wasn't very old. I keep remembering what he said when I left, that, that there were two worlds and that I was picking the wrong one. He adopted me, you know. Yeah. I talked to his lawyers, but I didn't get the whole story. It doesn't make any difference, I guess, except that I could have made him a lot happier than I did. He had a son of his own that got killed in an auto accident when he was 14. The mother, too. I didn't know that. I was the same age, and I was supposed to take his son's place. Mr. Morgan found me in a state home and took me in. Gave me everything. Put me through school, high school. Why did you leave him? Uh, guess I'd lived too long in the other world or something. I always felt like an outsider. Then the war came along, and I went into the Merchant Marine. How old are you now, Rocky? 27. I went back after the war, but... I wasn't cut out for it, I guess. Tuxedos and formal dinners and dames I didn't understand. The rest of the people who never seemed to say what they were thinking. Yeah, there are plenty of those. I tried because I knew Mr. Morgan wanted me to. It was just something rough in me that I couldn't hold down. And there were a couple of things with these stuffed shirts, you know, fights. Finally, a few years back, I got up and left without saying anything to Mr. Morgan. 
I got no sermon to preach. I know it wasn't the way to do it. And he left me some insurance anyway. How do you like that guy? Have you been thinking about the Sagasa thing, Rocky? I've been trying. You can't remember any more? No. Does it look bad? I can't tell about these other people. I wouldn't have killed them. Misha's trouble, I know that, but I wouldn't have killed him. I didn't have any reason to. Uh, that's been my approach, but I haven't proved anything with it. You sit tight until I come back. Oh, here. Brought you some cigarettes. <laughs> I got an answer that morning on my cable to Hartford. The Morgan estate was sending a lawyer. Then I waited until the middle of the afternoon when the charter plane came back from Managua with the results of the fingerprint tests. There was only one place to go. Why didn't you give me a straight story at the beginning, Rocky? Oh, what do you mean? Why didn't you tell me you killed him? Did I kill him? You know you did. No, I swear I don't. I don't remember. You mean that, don't you? I don't remember, Mr. Dollar. I don't remember. Did I kill him? Didn't you ever think of getting Sagasa out of the way? Yeah. He was in the way. Did I kill him? I've been looking for evidence that would say you didn't. What I found says you did. What? Your fingerprints on the knife. And no other fingerprints at all. They couldn't have been faked. There was only one way to get them there. Oh, I'm sorry. So am I. I didn't mean to. I had no reason to. Why did I? Things happen, I guess. It could have happened to anybody who, who doesn't have any more sense than I do. I got nobody to blame. Nobody. Expense account, item five. Same as items three and four, transportation back to Hartford. Item six, miscellaneous, $235, expense account total, $840.75. Remarks? I'm sorry the mission wasn't more successful. The estate lawyer arrived before I left, and although he wasn't familiar with Nicaraguan courts, he felt that David Rocky had a chance on a second-degree murder plea. None of us knew what the terms would be. But we did know that a million and a half dollars was worth waiting for. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and is written by Gil Dowd with music by Wilbur Hatch. Edmund O'Brien's latest picture is the Paramount Pictures production... The Redhead and the Cowboy. Featured in tonight's cast were Lillian Baez, Bill Conrad, Tyler McVeigh, Edgar Barrier, Jay Novello, and Jack Moyles. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. This is Dick Cutting inviting you to join us next week at this time when Edmund O'Brien returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Saturday Night Fun with the young married set when Lucille Ball and her favorite husband come along later this evening on most of these same CBS stations. You'll enjoy the laughs with Lucille Ball as she tries to help, but more often hinders the man she calls my favorite husband. And now, stay tuned for Von Monroe's Caravan, which follows immediately over most of these same CBS stations. This is CBS, where Hopalong Cassidy rides every Saturday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>